Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland, and in this short video I want to show you how to create a basic Gantt chart using Microsoft Excel version 2003. A Gantt chart, as you know, is a tool that's used to plot schedules for projects. Here we have a simple e-learning project with a list of tasks down along the left-hand side, starting out with planning the course and then doing instruction design and so on. And each of my tasks that I have here, I have a start date for each task, duration in number of days, and an end date for each task. So I have the basic information I need here for a simple Gantt chart. However, Excel doesn't have a tool to create Gantt charts, so what we need to do is to be clever about how we can use some of the existing tools within Excel in order to create my basic Gantt chart. The first thing I need to do is to select the Charting Wizard tool, so as I would normally for a chart, so select that button there, and this gives us a Chart Wizard and in step one. The type of chart that I need to select here is important. I select the bar chart on the left hand side and in the right hand side for the chart subtype I select the stacked bar chart highlighted here and click on next. Now in step two I have two tabs across the top here. I have data range and the series range. It's the series range that I need so let's click on that. And you can see I have no series, I have no data added in here so far. So what I need to do is uh, add in as a series uh, some information from my t uh, data behind. So I'm just going to move this to the right hand side and the first series I'm going to add in is the series here representing the start dates. So if I click on the add button for a name I'm going to call it start date and in the values I want these values here to be inserted so I'm going to click on the button to the right hand side of the values. This allows me within Excel to select all the values that I need, click on the chart wizard button and I've added in all of those values automatically here and you can see my chart is starting to form at the top up here. The second series that I need is the duration. So I'm going to add in a second series, I'm going to call this duration, and the data values that I need, select on the button to the right of the data values, is simply the duration in days here. Click on the button to return to the charting wizard. So now you can see I've got blue inf bars over here representing the start dates and the purple bars representing the durations. So one final thing I need to do here, on the left hand side you can see I've got numbers and I want to replace this with the task because each of these bars represents a task. And in order to do this I've got an option down at the bottom of my screen here uh, for the category uh, access labels to put in the tasks that you see listed here. So simply click on the button to allow me to select this and highlight all the tasks in my project and you can see now some of them at least appearing to the left hand side of my chart. So that's all I need the charting wizard to do, so it's gone as far as I can go here, so now I'm going to click on the finish button. And you can see this creates quite a squashed, messed up chart, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is tidy this up. So let me just move this up to the left hand side and expand it to make it a little bit bigger so that we can work with it. And that's, while that's a little bit better, it's still a little bit messed up. So let me get rid of the start date and duration uh, legend here, I don't need that and my labels here on the X and Y axis are far too big so I'm going to change those. So first of all I'm going to change the X axis here by right clicking on the axis and choosing format axis. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to reduce the font down to size 10. I'm going to do the same on the Y axis, choose format axis and reduce the font down to size 10. And now I can see all my tasks listed on the long left hand side and the dates for my project listed here. The next thing I want to do is get rid of these blue bars here in the centre because I don't need those and a simple way to get rid of these is just hide them by changing the colour. So click on the blue bars, you can see Excel highlights uh, the bars selected by this little dot. Right click anywhere in this area and choose Format Data Series. And this brings me up a window here that allows me to change the pattern of my bars. So I've got a border around each bar which is in black and a coloured filled in area which is in blue. If I change those simply to none, so I click none here for border and none here for area, what that, and then click OK, what that will do is it will have the effect of hiding the blue bars. Now I'm starting to get something that resembles a Gantt chart. However, everything here is in reverse order. We can see on the left hand side that we've got the final release of the product at the very beginning and the planning the course which should be at the start at the bottom. So I need to reverse these uh, options here. So if I right click on this again, choose format axis and in the scale tab here, the second tab here, there is a box that allows me to list the categories in reverse order. So I'm just going to check that and click OK. So now you can see my course starts at the beginning uh, a plan, instruction design and so on and continues down onto release. So you've got now something that's much closer to a Gantt chart that we would expect. Now I could finish here but 
Unfortunately, Excel puts in all this blank space here and a little bit of blank space at the back. So I've got lots of dates before my project starts and lots of data after, dates after. So I don't need those, so I can use this space to expand my Gantt chart. Now, in order to do this, I need to understand how Excel manages dates. I can't simply just knock off the dates up here uh, without knowing how Excel manages the dates. So in order to do that, I need to go back to my data. So I'm just going to move my table out of the way here and go back and have a look at the, my date that's on my chart. So if I click on the start date, the 5th of January here, Excel actually stores this as a unique number. And in order to find out what that number is, it's quite easy. On the formatting toolbar up at the top of my screen here, I have a comma style button, which is a simple button with just a comma on it. So if I click on that button, it will turn the date into a numeric value, which is a number that I can use, this number 39,818. So keep that in mind, note that number. So I'm going to undo that to put my date back. And now go to the end date of the project, the 22nd of February, and do the same thing. Click on the comma button and note that this number is 39,866. So I'm just going to undo that there and bring my chart back into view. So by changing the date range up here uh, with the numeric values that I've recorded, I should be able to expand my chart. So in my format axis window here, now on the scale font, you can see these numbers, which mean something at this stage. The first date was stored as 39,818, so let's change that. And the last date was stored as 39,866, so we'll change that as well. And um, while I'm here, I'm going to change the major unit to, to uh, 7 to represent a week. Um, and click OK. Now I have what I would typically represent as a Gantt chart for my project. And you can see when each project, each task in the project starts and finishes. We've got gaps here probably representing weekends. We can see, for example, that graphics and simulations can take place at the same time. And I have a high-level Gantt chart representing my full e-learning project. So that's how you draw a simple basic chart in Excel. If you want more complicated charts, you're probably better off using Microsoft Project, but something like this would be ideal for presentations or just doing simple overviews of a project schedule. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.